The story of the Jackson Hole Air Force is one of the best stories in skiing. We were like this band of renegade, hard-charging skiers that we just banded together and we went nuts. It's these groups, these renegades, that give the mountain some life, some spirit. Swift, silent, deep. It just has a mystique to it. It's culture. It's a ski culture. Someone would see a line skied in some obscure place and they knew it was tattooed by someone from the Jackson Hole Air Force. It all goes back to the gut feeling of making a turn is ultimate freedom. We're just driven by powder. Eventually that meant we had to go out of bounds. And that meant we didn't give a crap what anyone thought about it. <laughs> we were kind of forced to become cops. Tackled me from the side, knocked me down, knocked me out of one of my skis. It was a criminal offense, and the sheriff's department could arrest you and take you away. And my attitude is public land. Why do they put a fence up because there's snow on the ground? It was just all about the Air Force and this hardcore group of guys that were out setting the bar at that time in skiing. The first extremes, the top five places were Jackson Hole Air Forcers. Coombs obviously stood out, you know, he did the gnarliest lines. Nobody would ever seen anything like that, a vision of what was to come. It's just like rock and roll, and those guys like Coombs and Hunt and Bartlett, they're like Zeppelin or The Who, you know? Everything that happens now relates to that in a certain way, whether people know it or not.